he has told me it's okay to not be married. Like he never said like your value isn't isn't um, solidified if you don't have a husband. He was mm -hmm. like, you can live, you can live, no kids. There was a time I didn't want any children. There was mm -hmm. a time I said I didn't want to make, be married. And he never said like, like that's your purpose in life. So mm -hmm. he's always treated me like a, he treats me like a woman in the sense that like a man is supposed to protect you if you choose. But yeah. one thing my dad said is that you allow people to have authority in your life. They don't just take it, you mm -hmm. give it to them. So until you give it to them, you're the one, uh, you know, with the authority and the autonomy mm. and you're a person and you're expected to, you know, move and do whatever as a person. He's a very wise man. Me and my sister, mm. we both didn't, we should have listened the first time around. We both <laughs> screwed up. <laughs> well, my dad, he told us though, my dad yeah. didn't sit back and not say anything. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I don't, I don't think this is it. <laughs> and we were like, no, we know more than you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let us make our own mistakes within reason yeah. you know but the thing about uh when you don't tell your parents the whole story they can't give you the whole advice that's good <laughs> so i'm sure my dad would have intervened a little quicker had he known everything but i we kind of knew that we had no business being with the men that we were with so we <laughs> couldn't tell the whole story mm. like, dad would have been like but i ain't raised you like that you know what i'm saying so what you doing What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We are continuing in our Father's Day series, A Daughter's Perspective. This has been a phenomenal series so far, and we're going to keep this train rolling. We have special guests with us. Monique, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. It's been a, it's been a good work day. <laughs> yeah for sure totally understand so uh first time visitor so can you tell us a little bit about yourself sure i'm 37 mother and i'm technically from ohio i'm a military brat so uh, my parents are from ohio so i claim ohio i was born overseas and um i'm a black woman in tech so I'm on the road right now. I work in a software company. And yeah, I'm pretty down to earth, pretty normal. <laughs> yeah, kind of for sure. Ohio, stand up. Yes. <laughs> we are both. Everyone Bless. knows. Yeah, right. Everybody know I'm always representing uh, Ohio. I'm, I'm from Cleveland. So yeah, yeah for sure. I want to talk about this Father's Day series because I want to make sure that we're building up our fathers because we hear a lot. We hear so much negativity about black dads and stuff like that. So I wanted to really talk about the, the good perspectives of dads. Uh, can you share with us a special memory you have with your father? Oh, man, my dad. So um, I don't know that it's one per se. Mm -hmm. I was a cheerleader in high school and mm -hmm. I cheered in college as well. And my dad showed up to all my games as if I like truly played a sport. Like, <laughs> like he was there, he came, he made, he took pictures. He would make like um, photo albums. Mm -hmm. Like he showed up, I mean, all the way down from when I was in drill team. And that was really important to me. Um, and in my younger when I was younger, mm -hmm. I used to think, gosh, my mom never shows up. Um, but my mom was a superwoman in her own right. But my dad, he was active military when I was young. Um, he's just a very active person. And he made the time to show up mm -hmm. and be at all my games he, all through college, too. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful because, you know, as kids, you know, we we looking, we we trying to see who who's supporting us today. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, God, dad show up for, God, you know, boys games, but they're actually doing something. Yeah. <laughs> Not that cheering isn't doing something. In my mind, it was doing something at the time. Of course. But here and now, I don't know that I would have the the motivation to go, like, fight a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> go see your cheers, like, oh, you get out there and go, go team, go. And, but he was there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Dad's got to show up. Uh, so how has your relationship with your father evolved over the years from you being maybe a teenager up until today? Like, 
How was how, how was that process for you? Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Um, I think the biggest thing with my father is he is the voice of reason. Mm. And I'm going to tell you a quick story. When um, this is when I knew that my dad was not only different from me, but someone I needed to like seek counsel from is I was building a desk. <laughs> I was building a desk. Okay. And it's so simple. The things that you like get wisdom from, but I called my dad. I wanted to build it by myself. I didn't have a man. And I was like, dad, I need you to come over because I need to build this thing and I don't have any tools. So I need to borrow your tools. And so he was like, all right, I'm bringing the tools over. And me and my girl math or whatever, like, I just want to just put it together. Like, I'm like, all right, I can look at it. I'm smart. I don't really need those directions, you know, like whatever. So my dad comes over and he's got the directions and I've read them, but I'm trying to read them as they go, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, let's read them all the way through. We're going to separate the pieces mm -hmm. and they'll be all where they need to be when we need it. And it made the process so much simpler. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when I knew like, all right, my dad has wisdom I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> and so over the years since I was a teenager to now as, you know, 30, late 30s, yeah. Um, I still seek that counsel for my father because mm. sometimes I don't see the whole picture mm. and I don't put the places where they need to go so that I can calm down. And mm. so he's that that voice to be like, listen, everything, it seems like a lot right now, yeah. but if we break it down section by section, mm. it's going to be okay. Mm. Yeah, that's some wisdom right there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> where, where did you get the furniture from? Oh, I don't know. I think it was from Walmart or something like, cause I, I worked two jobs for a while. So I needed like another desk. Yeah. And like, I was like, I need to put this together and I just need to, I just need to do it now. You know, everything is like a now time. Oh but yeah, he has patience and just he's just wise. Because mm -hmm. I was about to say, if it was uh, shout out to IKEA, I'm not I'm not hating, but you know, right. if, it, if it was from IKEA, it was just a it a bit of different monsters. <laughs> no, it was. It might as well have been. It was just like I don't even know what all this stuff is. C B D <laughs> one two three. Like <laughs> that's so real. Uh, what life lessons has your father taught you that you still carry with you to this day? Um, one of the biggest ones, uh, I, and I'm sorry to your listeners. Everything is a story with me. It's all good. Sometimes I don't have the language. Yeah. Um, so to give you a background about me, I am a calculated risk taker. I'm not one to gamble, but <laughs> I am one to be like, instead of what could go wrong, I'm like, what could go right? You know? Mm -hmm. So I had started dating this guy and I decided that this could be my husband. So I'm going to move to another state and, and make it happen. And I'm going to yeah. quit my job. I worked for the government. I come from a government family. So I worked for the government for eight years, <laughs> living in my town in Ohio. Everything was like stable. Yeah. And I said, I'm just going to 
quit this job, start off in the private sector and move to another state that I've never been to. <laughs> and the thing my dad told me when I had to brand this by him, because it wasn't like, it was a risky move, but it wasn't like, I didn't think about it. I didn't plan for it or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And um, I asked him, I said, you think I'm, you think I'm kind of crazy? <laughs> and he said, no, I think you're rebranding. And I think it's good to rebrand um, in different stages of your life mm -hmm. in order to move forward. So that was a lesson. I had not looked at it that way. Mm -hmm. And that is the way that I view um, like different stages in my life. Like mm -hmm. this is um, a rebrand, yeah. but not in a way like I screwed that one up, but like all huge companies do it, right? Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two chains. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like talk about it. Okay. So my dad gave me that in because he like when he retired from the military, he went to do um uh homeland security. Mm -hmm. And my parents are married. They've been married for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. And by this time when he retired, he they've been married over 20 years at that time. Mm -hmm. And when he went to homeland security, he had a go live somewhere else. So my parents had a seven year long distance marriage. Wow. And that's territory they never handled before. And honestly, I think it helped them. I think the distance kind of like rebranded their marriage. Wow. <laughs> and wow. So um, he just gives me that lesson, like, don't be scared. Cause if you make fear-based decisions, you'll get fear-based results. Mm. So he just tells me get out there and he really supports my passion to like try mm, that's good so what did that do for you um with him kind of giving you that kind of like affirmation to a degree or you know just seeing it from a different viewpoint like what did that do for you yeah um i think it gives me the courage to fail mm. because you can bounce back <laughs> and I love that he gave that to me yeah. because I think that um, not wondering if what if mm -hmm. is worse than regret to me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's the worst, right? <laughs> because you just ruminate and that's just like, I don't want to do that. I can say I did it. This is what happened. And I learned from it. And um, one thing that my dad uh, has given me, along with my mother, um, is, how do I put this? Um, even when I was finding my spirituality, like as most of the Black community were raised in the church, you know, I have the same like life we've all had. Yeah. But the, and my dad was too, my, my grandmother, his mother was a pastor. But the difference was they always told me, you have the autonomy to choose. And mm. even though this is our lifestyle and because you're our child, this is a lifestyle you got to live because you're in our house. It wasn't a, like you're being forced. Mm -hmm. It was, this is our way, but you can just, when you have the resources and whatever, you can go discover your own way. And it helps you have more conviction when yes. you've made that choice on your own mm -hmm. rather than Voice was given to you so my dad's always given me like creative control with yeah. guidance yeah 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 <laughs> yeah right that's uh, i love it that's good because the fathers that's watching or listening to this today i would love to hear your comments below because i think that's something that we don't do enough with our kids is to give them that allow them to make mistakes but still know that we're still there to catch them but just allow them to make their own decisions because you know that can we be challenging. We don't in our community. We don't. And it's not all our fault because a lot of our community, that's how they were raised. And then we were raised and it passed down. So I don't exactly know where my dad got that um, <laughs> modus, you know, operanda. Yeah, right. But he's the youngest of 12. And um, I feel like just that kind of dynamic might have he had to deal with a lot of personality. So he was ahead of his time in terms of like, mm. he was almost a psychologist on accident. <laughs> <laughs> like I got 12 people plus my parents to figure out and navigate and he figured it out. 
Oh, that's good. I, yeah, I wonder if you would ask him about that. Like, what would he say? I'm, 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 I would like to know. Yeah, right? Because I'm a dad. I'm out here trying to make it work. So, you know, maybe he can drop some jewels uh, for me. What quality do you admire most about your dad? Uh, man, that's a good question. It could be one or multiple. It, I'm going to say two, and mm -hmm. I don't even know how to like sum it up in a word, yeah. but um, my dad has a level of understanding that I aspire, kind of back to like having all those personalities. Mm -hmm. He is not, um, when something happens, he can he can understand why. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people cannot do that. And I can't quite call it empathy. Yeah. But he could just say like, I really understand why you did that. And then he can tell you why you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I see where your head was when you did that. You know, yeah. I would, I, I think that's really admirable because it helps you keep from being mad. And mm -hmm. I think that leads into um, the other thing I, I love about him. He, he just is very like stoic, but not in a way that's nonchalant. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, not me. I'm like hyper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. So, so dad is like, like wise, have, have the foresight to, uh, and then not to get like out of his emotions. Yeah. You no. Know, yeah. Yeah. Not like he's not emotional, but not in a way that's like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Feel caring from him, but it's not like chaotic. Mm -hmm. Very like I can shepherd you. It, I've said on Twitter before, if my dad said we have to like walk off this cliff. Yeah. I'm going because you got it figured out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what's up. Like. <laughs> That's good because a lot of people are gonna be like, "Where are we going?" Right. <laughs> I might be like, "I might be like, everything's gonna be okay, right?" And if he says okay, I'm gonna be like, "Okay." All right, let's let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most valuable piece of advice he's given you that you take with you to this day? <laughs> it's kind of silly. Mm. So my first heartbreak. Mm. Um. It had been like a couple months and I was like, I don't like this. How long is this going to take? Yeah. Like, come on now. Like, it's been enough time. <laughs> and and I remember him saying, how long did it take for you to get in it? And that was some wisdom. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Like, you mm. know what? You're right. It took me a couple. <laughs> and he didn't give me a certain amount, but I I wanted it to, yeah. to hurry up. Like, in like yeah. a couple. Like, come on. Yeah. And I think we live in a society where it's kind of like a flex to be like, I got over it. I'm over you 24 hours ago. Who? <laughs> Mike, who? <laughs> but um, <laughs> he really taught me to process, like process it, because the longer you avoid it, avoidance and actual processing are not the same. They might look the same on the surface, but they're not happening the same on the, in the inside. Mm -hmm. So he taught me uh, the advice of like processing it so that you can truly move on from it, mm -hmm. which kind of ties into the rebrand. Like now you've really had that error yeah. and you, you can truly move on instead of, you know how um, there's repackaging and there's rebrand, you know, mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. it looks the same, but it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's so, good. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Because you, so how old were you at that time, like going through that? That heartbreak? That heartbreak? Oh, yeah. How so old were you? I was so young. I was like early 20s. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Early 20s. And um, it's the only heartbreak I ever had. Like I've had my feelings hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but that was like can't eat, can't sleep, can't like I just mm -hmm. can't. Um, <laughs> it was an R and B song. Yes, it was bad. And and he and I was young and, and my dad could have been like, girl, you young, girl, bye. Yeah. But I'm talking about like super young, like 19 to like 21, you know? Yeah. Um, and but he didn't. He always 
uh, recognized the stage I was in that life and took what I took serious, serious, mm -hmm. even though he could have said, you know, as a parent and you're a parent, my son will tell me something and it'd be like, it's the end of the world. And in my mind, I'm like, boy, please, this is not the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they, you can't process that in that moment. It's in your world, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so he would like take my world serious mm. out of whatever stage that is, you know? Yeah. So. That's, that's good. And uh, I don't want to get off track, but you talked about process and your feelings and you talked about in with culture, how we just so quick to I'm over somebody. Yeah. Uh, all of that is cap, right? It's it's all that isn't. It's not true. <laughs> yeah, because it takes a while to get over somebody, depending on how long the relationship if was. If you don't grieve, you're not over it. And that's yourself. You have to grieve yourself. You have to grieve old version of yourself, old people. Even if it's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. you got to grieve it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and very few people willing to take that time to actually say, I'm I'm grieving, right? Yeah. Uh, and very, very few are able to recognize that. Uh, can you share a time with your father where he supported you the most during a challenging time in your life? Or was it the heartbreak? No, honestly, it was when I moved to, I moved to Detroit mm -hmm. uh, when I told you I had did my first rebrand. Uh, and I decided to go back in the private sector. And I had to start from scratch. And I was 30, 30, 31. Mm -hmm. And um, I think some of your listeners can relate to when you, when you are good, like you're typically like just good at whatever you do. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of comes easy. Mm -hmm. You expect, you have that expectation, anything you try. And when I went into the private sector and decided to be a loan officer, um, it was hard. Mm -hmm. I was challenged. I felt dumb. I was like, I'm I'm an idiot. <laughs> I know I'm not, but it's feeling yeah, like it. Sure. Yeah. I was working 14 hour days. My mm -hmm. um I had moved to Detroit, so I had to like get my feet grounded. So I didn't have my son right away. He spent the summer at home with my parents. So I had no family. I didn't have my son. I was in, I was just, everything was new. And I was calling my dad crying. <laughs> and he talked me off the ledge every time. Wow. Like he didn't say, you're 30. Suck it up. <laughs> <about a bit." laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he, he, I had the same, almost similar experience when I went through freshman year of college. I went from, I grew up in an affluent white neighborhood. <laughs> And I went to an HBCU and it was a very mm. stark change for me. And I was calling my dad my freshman year, like, it's ghetto. They don't like me. They're telling me I'm an Oreo da, 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 and I'm crying. And it was, it was, it was like deja vu. Like he, it was like, I was that 18 year old in a new territory, like with new people, with nobody. And he still treated me with care. Mm. And I love that for me. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, that's good because like you say, even at 30, he didn't look at you like girl, you grown. Yeah. You know, so that's that's beautiful. Uh what role has your father played in shaping your views on family and relationships? I'm surprised. So, you know, my parents are married, like I've mentioned several times. Mm -hmm. And um his parents were married. My dad's parents. He came mm -hmm. from a, a nuclear family. My mother came from a nuclear family. Mm -hmm. And and I come from a nuclear family. So yeah. <laughs> mm. he uh just from sight, you know, he um was the more traditional, like he is the the one who makes the most money. Mm -hmm. Um, and he is the final say in the house. But the good thing about my dad. Um, that, that I have some other friends who can't say the same is that my mom's voice mattered. Mm -hmm. So he didn't say like, girl, you don't make enough money to um, have an opinion. Like he never said that. Mm -hmm. um, and he was just, he always heard everybody out. He was a house full mm -hmm. of women. He had two girls. We had two girl dogs. <laughs> <laughs> he had a mother. So yeah. there's just girls everywhere. He heard everyone out. He kept his cool. Um, he took care of the house. He always made us feel like he, gave us safety like when my dad would walk in the house it was like a safe harbor like all right everything's gonna be fine i don't know it, mm. everything could have been on fire mm. before you walked in but when dad gets home 
everything's cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I used to just like, like wish for him to be home. So he's that's what he's given me an example of or instilled in me, if you will. Yeah. But then the other side of that is um, he has told me it's okay to not be married. Like he never said like your value isn't isn't um, solidified if you don't have a husband. He was mm -hmm. like, you can live, you can live, no kids. There was a time I didn't want any children. There was mm -hmm. a time I said I didn't want to make, be married. And he never said like, um, like that's your purpose in life. So mm -hmm. he's always treated me like a, he treats me like a woman in the sense that like a man is supposed to protect you if you choose. But yeah. one thing my dad said is that you allow people to have authority in your life. They don't just take it, you mm -hmm. give it to them. So until you give it to them, you're the one, uh, you know, with the authority and the autonomy mm. and you're a person and you're expected to, you know, move and do whatever as a person. He's a very wise man. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Because we, yeah, we show the way we treat ourselves is how we show people how to treat us. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a firm believer in that. So how, how does that play into with your dad being a man that he is? How did that play into you choosing uh, a, a boyfriend like was that was that the blueprint or um he is now okay. I think when I first got out into the world mm -hmm. um I wanted to make my own way I wanted to choose my own person and I had this like idea that like times are different so I didn't choose right the first time <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you um in no shade to my son's dad, he's a great person. Yeah, he just wasn't good for me. But I mean, you know, we both participated in this, you know, and what we did. So it is what it is. But now the um, the man I'm with, he's in the military. <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't have any children. Um, he has a master's in economics. Mm -hmm. He comes from a nuclear home, and he's he very much reminds me of my dad, like. It's almost crazy. My dad loves him too. Like as yeah. soon as he met him, he recognized himself in him. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's like super stoic. I tell him that all the time. And which is good because I'm hyper. Yeah. So he, you know, I give him a little more excitement and he grounds me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think my dad's amazing. I think my dad, I wish people could experience my dad. Mm. I'm always trying to get people to come over and have an experience of my dad. So to find a man who is like my dad for me is a great thing. And my sister, I think she did, a, she's married. She got married 12 years ago. Mm. And my brother-in-law is very much a, a leader, you know, like he, he, he's, she's just a good person. So I think my dad did a good job. Yeah. But yeah. we both, me and my sister, mm. we both didn't, we should have listened the first time around. We both <laughs> screwed up. <laughs> Well, my dad he told us though my dad yeah. didn't sit back and not say anything yeah yeah he was like i don't, I don't think this is it <laughs> and we were like no we know more than you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let us make our own mistakes within reason yeah. you know but the thing about um uh, not to take not let you get a word in but i want to say this because no, this is good um when you don't tell your parents the whole story they can't give you the whole advice that's good. <laughs> so I'm sure my dad would have intervened a little quicker had he known everything. But I, we kind of knew that we had no business being with the men that we were with. So we <laughs> couldn't tell the whole story. Mm. Like, dad would have been like, but I ain't raised you like that. You know what I'm saying? So what you doing? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, he don't he, he don't know all the details because I was embarrassed because I know better. Mm. Yeah, that's like they tell you in therapy. They can't help you if you don't if you're not honest, right? Not honest. Mm, you yeah. lie to yourself or anybody else. So <laughs> that's some wisdom right there. That's a yeah. That's gonna help somebody. <laughs> Got to tell the whole story. Yeah. She is. Uh, what's one thing you if you could say one thing to your father right now if he was watching this, what would you say to him? I tell my dad every day. I think he's amazing. He's my best friend. And um, I wouldn't be where I'm at without him. Mm. And I love him, of course. <laughs> and he would say, how much money do you need? 
<laughs> yeah. That, no, it's funny you say that because uh, my daughter, she texted me the other day. She said, Dad, I just love you. She just, that's all she said in the text. And right. I was thinking, how much money you need? What, yeah. What you need, girl? <laughs> <laughs> so I always have to, uh, I, I like to make sure I call my dad and tell him, give him his flowers when I don't need anything. Because I do be needing things. <laughs> So, you know, I got to keep him on his toes. No, nope, not today. <laughs> That's wisdom right there, though, right? You're like, man, I'll just say, you know, because I don't need anything right now. I'm in the clear. <laughs> right. So you don't know when I'm coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. Well, this has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much for your transparency. Thank you for um, just sharing your message with the world. I'm sure that, you know, there's other people who know your dad as well, but for you to take the time and share your experience along with his, uh, that speaks volumes. Uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you on social media, because I know you have like 100,000 followers on Twitter. Like, how do you do that? I've been on Twitter since 06. Oh yeah, I'm OG. Okay, I've been so you OG. <laughs> yeah, you've been in the game. Okay, yeah. okay, that's what's up. So yeah, it's flawless and brown. Um, on all platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, the E in flawless is a three, mm -hmm. and the O is a zero. And on Twitter, it's flawless and brown two. So flawless in the letter in brown, and then the number two. Um, and then Instagram flawless and brown. TikTok, Flawless and Brown. And <clears throat> I just want to say this. Flawless and Brown represents me as I used to be a makeup artist. And um, I made a Flawless and Brown application. So for mm. anybody who comes up to me, like, you're not flawless. Nobody's flawless. Mm -hmm. But if I did your face, your makeup was flawless. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's that's the, the story behind that. Yes. Love it. Well, I'll make sure I have all the good stuff linked up in the description below and how everyone can get in touch with you, you know, just in case, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I would but, love to come back. This was so much fun. Yes. Cause there's so much stuff. Cause this is a father's day segment and there's so many questions that I want to ask concerning relationships. Cause that's, yeah. that's what we do. Right. So, yeah. So I'm um, just, yeah, we're going to put that out there now on recording that you're going to come back. Right. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Brave Arts community, you heard it here. So if she don't come back, make sure you hit her up on Twitter. And like, hey. You said, yeah, <laughs> you said you were coming back. Uh, thanks once again for uh, taking this time for this. I appreciate it so much. Brave Arts community, if you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with someone. Father's Day is coming up. Even if it's not Father's Day, like still show your dad some love because it's segments like this that can really help change the dynamic of a relationship. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a five-star rating. Give us a two-star, three-star. I want to hear from you. And by doing so, I'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? Okay. <laughs> so this is Sean Heineman, and we are out.